Writing an ionic formula. An ionic formula describes what atoms are in an ionic compound. And now an ionic compound is made up of two things. First, it's made up of a metal, and then second, it's made up of a nonmetal. So if you take a metal and you combine it with a nonmetal, you're going to get an ionic compound. And here, the metals are everything in orange, and the nonmetals are everything in blue. They're divided by a staircase that's in bold, sort of at the right of the periodic table. So, what's making the metal stick to the nonmetal in these compounds? The charges on these atoms. You can get the charge on an atom from the column that it's in on the periodic table. So everything in column 1a has a plus 1 charge. Everything in column 2a has a plus 2 charge. Skip over that middle valley area. Everything in column 3a has a plus 3 charge. In column 4a, these elements will either have a plus 4 or minus 4 charge, depending on what they're paired with. If they're paired with an ion that has a positive charge, then they'll be negative 4. And if they're paired with an ion that has a negative charge, then they'll be positive 4. Everything in column 5a has a negative 3 charge. In column 6a, all of the atoms will have a negative 2 charge. And in column 7a, all of the atoms will have a negative 1 charge. So we're going to use these charges to figure out the charge on an, a specific atom when it be, combines in a molecule. OK, so this says first write the ions for each element below and the correct formula for the ionic compound that each pair forms after combining. So first, sodium and oxygen. The first part of the question is to write the ions for each element. So first, sodium. Sodium is Na. It's on the left side of the periodic table, and it has a plus one charge. So to write the ion for sodium, that's a sodium atom that has a charge, you'd write Na, with a plus one in the top right corner. For oxygen, oxygen is at the top right of the periodic table. Because it's in column 6a, it has a minus two charge. And so to write an oxygen ion, you would write O with a minus two in the top right corner. And so those are the ions for sodium and for oxygen. An ion is an atom that has a charge. The next part of the question asks for the correct formula for the ionic compound that each pair forms after combining. To find out how these two elements combine, you crisscross the charges. So the superscript on one element becomes the subscript on the other element. In this case, the two at the top right of the oxygen will go at the bottom right of the sodium. And the one at the top right of the sodium will go in the bottom right of the oxygen. Now you don't write the number one because by writing the O, you know that you have one of those atoms. So you don't need to write the one in. And that is the formula for the compound that you form when you combine sodium with oxygen. Na2O. So when you take sodium and mix it with oxygen, you get Na2O. Let's try the same thing with barium and nitrogen. So first, let's just write the ions. So first, barium. Barium is in the bottom left of the periodic table because it's in column 2a, it has a plus 2 charge. So to write that ion, we'll write Ba with a plus 2 in the top right corner. Next, nitrogen. Nitrogen is in column 5a at the top right of the periodic table. Because it's in column 5a, it has a minus 3 charge. So to write a nitrogen ion, we'll write N with a minus 3 in the top right corner. So. Those are the two ions, one for barium and one for nitrogen. 
Now the second part of the question says to write the correct formula for the ionic compound that each pair forms after combining, and to find out the ionic compound, we crisscross the charges. So the superscript on one element becomes the subscript on the other. Here, the three at the top right of nitrogen becomes the three at the bottom right of barium, and the two at the top right of barium will become a two at the bottom right of nitrogen. So we crisscrossed those charges. And that is the ionic compound that forms when barium combines with nitrogen. So when you take barium and you mix it with nitrogen, you'll get Ba3N2. Okay, how about gallium and chlorine? First, write the ions for each of these elements. Gallium is kind of interesting. The only metal that's a liquid at room temperature is mercury, but gallium has a pretty low melting point. It melts at 85.58 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's above room temperature. Room temperature is around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. But our body temperature, the human body temperature, is around 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you hold gallium in your hand, that's above its melting point, and it'll start to melt in your hand. Gallium is toward the right of the periodic table in group 3A. Because it's in group 3A, it has a plus 3 charge. So to write a gallium ion, you'd write Ga with a plus 3 in the top right corner. You might be noticing that in some of these examples, the, th the number comes before the plus sign, and in others, the plus sign comes before the number. Those are the same. So you can either write the plus sign before or after the number in these charges at the top right of the elements. All right, how about chlorine? Chlorine is at the right of the periodic table. Because it's in group 7A, it has a, plus, a minus one charge. So to write a chlorine ion, you write Cl with a minus one in the top right corner. And so those are the two ions for gallium and for chlorine. Second part of the question asks for the ionic compound that this pair forms when they combine. And to get that, we're going to crisscross the charges. So the number at the top right of one of the elements is going to become the number at the bottom right of the other. In this case, the 1 at the top right of chlorine is going to become a 1 at the bottom right of gallium. Because it's a 1, we don't have to write it in, because just by writing the symbol Ga, we know that there's going to be 1 gallium. Then the 3 at the top of right of gallium becomes a 3 at the bottom right of chlorine. And notice with these, I'm not including the positive or negative signs, I'm only including the numbers when I make the superscripts the subscripts. So the f ionic compound that forms when you combine gallium and chlorine is GaCl3. So when you take gallium, you mix it with chlorine, you'll get GaCl3. What happens when you combine aluminum and sulfur? First, let's write the ions. So for aluminum, aluminum is kind of to the right side of the periodic table in group 3A. Because it's in group 3A, the charge is it's going to have a is going to be positive three so to write an aluminum ion we'd write al with a three plus in the top right sulfur sulfur is on the right side of the periodic table because it's in group 6a it's going to have a negative two charge so to write a sulfur ion you'd write capital s with a negative two in the top right corner so those are the ions for aluminum and for sulfur. The second part of the question asks for the ionic compound that these form when they combine. So to find that, we're going to crisscross the charges. The two that's at the top right of sulfur will go on the bottom right of aluminum. And the three that's at the top right of aluminum will go on the bottom right of sulfur. So Al2S3 is the formula for the compound that forms when you combine aluminum and sulfur. So when you take aluminum, mix it with sulfur, you should get Al2S3. Thank you for your attention.